that um, they developed as the pillars of a life, pi the pillars of uh, a life as a disciple. And the first one is conversion. So like I, we talked about in the beginning of the program, encountering Jesus, having a radical shift in your life, you know, a quantum leap away from it's all about me to no, it's all about Jesus. And that's, it, you know, being um, revolutionized that way. Um, conversion is how it starts. And then communion is the second pillar. Communion in, with Jesus in the Eucharist, but also when you've had this encounter and when you become a Christian, a disciple, you want to be with other people who have had that same encounter so you can support one another, build each other up. Uh, the third pillar is orthodoxy, doing it in the heart of the church, um, where, the, you know, that this truth that bubbles up and constantly gives us life. Um, the fourth is mission, which is the one that the Catholic Church unfortunately has gotten has missed over, you know, over the past decades, which, you know, you speak on so often that and Pope John Paul II says, these first, if these first three don't lead into the fourth, there's a huge problem. If you, the, if you have the first three, it must, they must lead into the fourth. Yeah. We must go on mission to therefore go and make more disciples, the Great yeah. Commission. In fact, in his encyclical Missionary Redeemer, he says that evangelization and missionary outreach is an indicator of, of our faith. Yeah, and that exactly. Where, where our faith isn't strong, our mission isn't strong. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So that, those are the, that's the, the, that's the intellectual model, I guess. But there's, you know, it's built on, we have a monthly meeting um, where speakers come and, you know, teach us um, basically on, on one of those four pillars of, the, of discipleship, you know, what it means to be a disciple. Um, we have small groups, men's and women's groups. We're running, uh, just starting this fall actually, which I'm one of the main guys heading up, running an alpha course for um, primarily the pillar of conversion and how do we reach out and get, you know, how do we reach out and let people experience the saving and loving power of Jesus. Mm -hmm. what's, um, what's an alpha course? A lot of people wouldn't be familiar with that. Yeah. Yeah. So it's something that was developed in England of all places about 30 years ago by a guy named Nicky Gumbel. And it's since spread to like 160 different countries. Tens of millions of people have done it. And it simply is like the best tool on the planet for helping people explore the Christian faith. And at the same time, it's the best tool on the planet for helping people actually meet Jesus and have it in the power of the Holy Spirit and have, uh, you know, an encounter that way. I, I know a lot, a lot of people have raised questions. Well, gee, it had had, you know, Anglican origins, you know, can Catholics really use it? Yeah. Okay. And I know there's been a lot of, there's an international board now for Catholic Alpha yeah. where they're kind of doing Alpha in a Catholic context yeah. where they're really making sure that uh, the, the whole truth about the faith in the church is communicated and not yeah. just the, the basic gospel yeah. message. Yeah. So I know lots of uh, bishops and priests and dioceses are, are, are now using it. Yeah. And, and, and as Father Council Mesa, Father Council Mesa is a huge fan of Alpha and he says it's not called Alpha and Omega. It's not supposed to be everything. It's just supposed to be the beginning. It's supposed to be the kerygma, which most Catholics never hear. Mm -hmm. um, and Cardinal Schoenberg is another guy who loves Alpha, and those two guys are pretty Catholic. Yeah. So it, it seems like it, it can work in a Catholic setting. We right. need not be afraid of it just because it comes from Protestant origins. Yeah, okay, good. And now, uh, how many people are in this uh, Alpha course? The one we have is about 25 people. Wow. It's very, it's small, we have it in someone's. I wouldn't call that small. I guess that's true, but <laughs> yeah. I guess, but at uh, Holy Trinity Brompton, where it originated, they have 1,500 people three times a year do it. So it's different scale, but we have it in one of our, uh, one of the people on our leadership team, uh, their, their house. And we, it starts with a dinner and we cook the dinner there for them. And it's a real, it's a place to come together and feel community, you know, and feel the love of one another, sharing a hot meal together, which is, that is overlooked a lot of the times, but it's actually an enormously important part. Um, people have, People so easily feel touched when, when they go, oh, these people cooked a meal for me. I just sit at this long table and nice candles are out. And it, people get to pull back from their, you know, the daily grind and see like, oh, there are, you know, people like this. This is what I'm here for. You know, connection, this, yeah. it, bond, this is what I'm here for. And I think Alpha is particularly geared towards not presuming that people know anything about anything. Absolutely. But it's, it's, it's geared towards like trying to reach unbelievers or yeah. fallen away Catholics who don't really understand anything about the faith where you just got to start, you know, does God exist, you know, is exactly. Jesus real, that type yeah. of thing. So it's, it's it, like you said, it's intended to be a beginning, an introduction. Exactly. And a lot more needs to happen. And what, what Nikki Gumbel always says is that 
Alpha really starts, you, feel, you start to notice a lot of life in Alpha when there are more atheists in Alpha than Christians. Oh yeah. Which is just a tremendous thing. And what, what is so genius about it is that it just, it, it lets people explore the meaning of life from a Christian perspective. You know, it's, it's an introduction to the Christian faith from the perspective of exploring the meaning of life. So it just, it admits the fact that there are certain questions human beings are meant to ask. And our culture never asks them. And there's no space in which we can ask them. We don't know how to ask them. You don't usually ask them in a bar or you know, behind your computer at a day job. So it's, like, it's kind of a, a retreat. Every, every evening of Alpha is sort of a retreat back from the daily grind. We say life's got to be more than just working till you crawl into a grave. Hey, let's get together and let's ask these human questions. What's the meaning of life? Is Jesus relevant to my life at all? You know, what's going to happen to me when I die? Those kinds of things. Yeah. And that's something that every human being, not just Christians, can identify with. Right. Yeah, you're trying to connect with where re people really are and what their questions really yeah. are. Now, would your hope be that some of these people who go through the Alpha course then come into ID 916 and kind of like sign up for more and for intentional discipleship? And that kind of yeah, thing? that's the hope because Alpha doesn't give you much in terms of discipleship. It gives you the kerygma, like I said, and the kind of the introduction to the Christian faith. But after that, there's still a whole lot more. And so there can be absolutely a, a natural jump from Alpha into a men's and women's group where you have solid discipleship um, content. You know, what does Jesus say about my time? What does he say about my money? What does he say about my friend relationships, my, how I should, you know, organize my family and all that yeah. stuff. Now, I know there's probably a lot of people out there who are listening right now and watching who are saying, gee, I wish we had something like this in our town or, you yeah. know, boy, there's a lot of young adults in our town that need to be evangelized or there's a lot of even Catholic young adults who aren't active in the church and are drifting yeah. away. A lot of parents are saying, gee, I wish we had something like this. Could they have something like this? Absolutely. The vision of ID916 is that ID916 chapters could be in every diocese of the country. That's the vision. So absolutely, they could have something like this. And the way to do it is to go to ID916.com. That's just ID916.com. No periods between no ID916.com. ID916 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 okay, okay. yeah. And um, yeah, there's, there's contact information there. Get in touch with us and we'll see. We're still, like we said, we're still sort of in the embryonic phase. And we're, we need pilot chapters at the moment to see what works, you know, to partner with us to see what works and to you know, try and put together the best model, the best product, if you could use that term, as, as possible. Um, but pretty soon, we'll be, at, we'll, be, we'll be birthed and out of that embryonic phase, we hope, if the Lord wants it to be that. And yes, we can, all over the country is where we want it. Yeah. Okay. Well, Joey, what would you say to parents who are concerned about their young adults who maybe say, oh, mom and dad, that's old fashioned, or yeah. oh, get with the times, or yeah. no, I don't want to go to mass. You know, what, what, what could they do to help their young adults? Um, I would say, I would look at St. Monica. Someone, and I was actually just reading First Peter this morning, um, talking about how, you know, when, when, he, when he speaks to wives and husbands, and he says, wives, just be, and an, even if you don't have to say any words, just be an enormous witness to the power of Jesus Christ through your conduct, through the, people see the hope in you. You know, they, they see a difference behind your eyes. Um, if you just live your faith, you don't have to be constantly telling people about it. That's good, but you have to be judic you know, judicious in how you actually do that. But I'd say, you know, going after your young adult children is probably just the same. Pray, 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 you know, without ceasing, but also just live a joyful life and let them know that you love them. That's what, that's all they want to know from you, that you love them. And then eventually they'll ask why, or they'll see, you know, why do you live your life in this way? And you, you witness by your life in that way. Um, yes, I, I mean, I think that would be most effective. Great job. Yeah, yeah oh, great. Thank you. Well, I'm going to tell people right now how they can get a little booklet that Peter Herbeck has written called What's Our Message, which would be a real good resource for how to share the gospel with other people. And then when we come back, Joe, I'd like to kind of uh, have you say a few words directly to those watching us, just whatever's on your heart, whatever you like to say, whatever the Lord gives you. Sure. Okay. At the heart of the new evangelization is the proclamation of the gospel, which St. Paul describes as the power of God for salvation. Brothers and sisters, it's the good news about the person of Jesus Christ, our Savior. Recent popes have reminded us that all believers, by virtue of their baptism, have been personally commissioned and sent by Jesus to tell others about him. 
In my new booklet, The New Evangelization, What's Our Message? I outline the essential elements of the gospel in a clear and concise way that makes the message accessible to you and can help you convey it to others. To receive your free copy of What's Our Message, visit our website at renewalministries.net or call 1-800-282-4789. Join us in sharing this good news. God bless you. You know, Joey, at the very beginning of the program, told us about how the real turning point for him was experiencing more of the Holy Spirit in his life. He used the phrase, baptized in the Holy Spirit. And one of the things we've done at Renewal Ministries is develop a, a seven-session program here called As by a New Pentecost to help people right in their homes, right in their parishes, wherever they are, get together a group of friends or family or neighbors or uh, just listen to it, watch it yourself. This is seven DVDs helping people to have that encounter with the Lord and that experience with the Holy Spirit that Joey talked about. That was such a turning point in his life. You can get it at renewalministries.net. Just click on the bookstore. Joey, how about just the few final words encouraging people to that, that kind of trust and surrender sure. that's been so important for the journey that you're on? Sure, absolutely. I know I'm, I'm a young guy and I don't have, you know, the treasure chests of wisdom that a lot of uh, people who have been through the ropes might have, but I do know that the Lord has been speaking something to me very clearly over the past, you know, nine months or so, and it's really is about trust and about faith. And I've, ha I've noticed a lot of fears in my own life about uncertainty and about um, not knowing deep down that at the end of the day, I am loved for who I am. And that's it. I don't have to earn that love, that I can just sit in that love and live in that love. And once I realize that, once anyone realizes that, I think all, f all fear goes away. And it just totally, perfect love casts out all fear. It banishes it. It just, it melts away. And fear so often stands, I know this is the case in my life, stands in the way of me really trusting God. If I give him this, oh my goodness, is, is he going to drop me? Is, is, am I really going to be happy? Am I really going to have a good life? Yeah. And I've, I've noticed in the past couple of months that absolutely is the case. I'm still learning it, but it absolutely is the case. He's the giver of all good gifts. He only wants what is best for us. What looks good to me, but, it is, but he says it's not good, that's not actually something that's going to make me happy. And so he's perfectly trustworthy. I urge you to pray to Mary and to the Holy Spirit for more trust in him. Hey, that's really great, Joey. Thanks a lot, and it's absolutely true. Next week, same time, same place, the choices we face.